recording. There we go. So tonight we're going to be spending some time with the Emmaus story, which is found in Luke chapter 24, if you want to have it to hand. And I'm going to be sending you back. You as yourself in the 21st century, back to first century Palestine, to that road between Jerusalem and Emmaus, a few days after Good Friday. And you're going back as you, however you are, whether you are feeling distracted or tired or wishing you felt differently or wishing you were a better human being, going back just however you are, because that's the point, and to come as you are. I'm not going to read the whole of the Emmaus story, but I'll just mention some of the key elements which will be familiar to most, if not all of you. So it's a few days after Good Friday and the crucifixion of Jesus. And two of his disciples, one of them is called Cleopas. The other one is unnamed. And many people uh, surmise that it's his wife, in fact. Often women were not named in the scriptures. So it could be Cleopas and his wife two disciples anyway, who are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, about seven miles. And they're downcast and they're talking about the events of Good Friday and also of how some of the women are claiming to have seen the risen Jesus and how confusing that all feels. And they are joined as they walk by Jesus, but they don't recognize him. And he plays a little game with them and asks what they're talking about and they tell him. And then uh, very politely, he calls them foolish and explains the scriptures, how it was necessary that he should go through what he went through and then rise. At the end of their journey, he makes as if to go on and they don't want this to end, so they invite him to stay. And he joins them. And at supper, he breaks the bread and they recognize him in that moment of breaking bread together. And then he disappears from their sight. They realize it was Jesus. He is risen. They're delighted. They run all the way back to Jerusalem. So you're going back to that journey, to that path, as one of those two, as the companion to Cleopas or his wife, you are going to be the, the other one. So let's begin by uh, arriving uh, in this prayer space. You might want to Change your position, get comfortable. If you fall asleep, you're on mute, we won't hear you. And just take a few breaths. And notice how you are in your body this evening or whatever time of day it is with you. If there's any tension, anything aching, 
just move it around a little bit and be kind to it. And notice if there's anything on your mind. You might ask God to keep that safe. And if other thoughts come back through the prayer, that's okay. Just notice. Let them go. How are you in your spirit? in your core. And so with a, a little bit of awareness of how you are this evening, just as you are, let God look at you or be with you. How is God looking at you or with you? And whether you have a sense of that or not, breathe in God's love for you each time you inhale. And take three deeper breaths doing that. And what is it you are seeking this evening? 
Is it some kind of encounter with the risen Jesus or something else? And ask God for whatever it is. And so we enter into this scene. And although I'll make suggestions, if for you it's happening differently, if you're a different person, or you're just praying this in a different way, that is fine. And my suggestion is that you begin to see in your mind's eye Or maybe you are considering it, thinking about it, that road between Jerusalem and Emmaus at the time of the first century. And it might look Middle Eastern, and it might not. Just take whatever is coming. And let yourself be there. To be there as yourself, a traveller back in time. And as yourself on that road, look around you and, and take in the terrain. What do you see in the distance? And nearby. What kind of a sky have you got? The 
maybe you can feel the sun's heat on your face. Notice any sounds that you can hear? Birds, insects, wind. Smell the air. Feel the touch of the air on your face and the touch of your clothes. And is there anything to taste? Maybe the atmosphere. And on this pilgrimage, you are not alone. You have a first century companion, who might be Cleopas or his wife. See which of those is with you. How did they seem to you? Full of the events of Good Friday. And you meet and you exchange names. A 
and you walk. And as you walk, your companion tells you what has been happening uh, with respect to Jesus and his crucifixion. And then the women going to the tomb. So let him tell you that in their own words. And when he or she has told you something of the story, you consider how in your world of the 21st century, what challenges there are to hope, to meaning, what's been happening for you and in your world. And in your own words, you, you tell some of that story to your companion. Is there anything else you want to say to your companion? Is there some equivalent of the, the women with their witness of the risen Lord?
and as you are there walking and talking, a third person, another companion, Jesus, comes and joins you. He may be incognito. How does he join this party? You might not see him clearly. What do you notice about him? Let him ask you both what you've been talking about. And so you begin again, your companion first, perhaps gives a summary of what they were saying. Be noticing what Jesus is doing. And let him turn to you to listen to your telling of your story, of your world and your life. And say it again to him. And how does Jesus respond to the two of you? Let him speak if he wants to. Or to choose his own way of communicating.
And is there something that he is communicating to you personally? With a word or a look or in some other way? You're reaching the end of this journey. In your case, the end of this particular prayer time. And Jesus makes as if to go. Listen to your companion asking him to stay. to dine with them. And you, do you have a request of him too? And then for the next minute or two, let whatever wants to happen begin to unfold between you, Jesus, perhaps the other companion. Let's take a little time for that.
whatever is happening or is beginning to take place can be continued later. And for now we say, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs>